everybody everybody on here I assume how many are here doing this for the first time really okay try to make it as painless as possible okay um, yeah being a referee will require a little bit more of you not much more of you um, but basically what it comes down to is that um, serving as the uh, serving as a referee for the meets you know a bit more responsibility but don't let it scare you off because I can tell you right now from the get-go a great meet for me as a referee is where you don't hear a peep out of me except for when I'm given pre-meet duties or thanking you all at the end of the meet if I don't have to make one call and it doesn't mean I've tipped my hat and I've gone to sleep or something like that poolside. Meaning that I have watched a meet that worked out so well, and these kids were, were so proficient. That is a great meet for me. I don't care about the scores or any of that other stuff. But unfortunately, that's not reality. And that's where you all come in. So... Let's go ahead and jump in here. I've got a nice little PowerPoint presentation for that as well. Hopefully I won't be beating your brains in on this one too much here. Anyways, okay, so welcome to the dive referee training portion of our evening. So simply uh, some of the... Uh, some of the things we're going to talk about here, and we're going to try to get through these quickly. Talk about your qualifications and your responsibilities as a referee. Um, what your pre-meet duty should entail and what's going to happen during the meet. What happens after the meet. Uh, a few other items to talk about. And then we're going to do a very quick open book. You cannot possibly fail exam because you're here. So we'll go from there. Yes? No? Did they behave? Okay. Good. All right. Sorry, my daughter. Just taking the pups out. Okay, so um, the qualifications here are you must be at least 19 years of age by June 1st. Now, I know that this year we're going ahead and letting the 19-year-olds go ahead and dive. Um, but generally speaking, it's always going to be the parents and so forth doing this. Okay, your recertification. Your certification and recertification are good for three years. Okay, and you must know the rules. You should know those rules. You do not need to know every single word in the rule book. You don't need to know it word for word. You just need to have a general understanding of where to find things. But for your part, to be able to do your referee part effectively, pages 06 to 37, you really need to know that stuff. Okay? You should have a good understanding. Don't get your, your, yourself blown away saying, oh my God, i got to know every little thing. The only thing I ask of you is that you have an understanding of where to find it in the book. That's the key. You want to know where to reference it. The more you reference to that and look it over and implement that as you're going along, you'll have a much better understanding of what it all means, and, and it'll come to you naturally, I promise. Okay? So, you are the head official. Okay? You are the, you know, one might call you the top dog or whatever you want to call it, but you're the head official of the meet, okay? And you must set your mind to be impartial throughout the meet, even when it's your own child on the board. We talked about that in the judging part, okay? You got to switch all that off. It doesn't matter who's out there, okay? Your pre-meet duties, okay? You need to conduct these. You got to meet with your officials. You got to know who they are, and you got to give them some direction here. You give instructions, directions. On, on how you're going to call the meet, okay? You want to answer those questions if there's any questions pertaining to the rules, in particular on how you're going to make calls, what are what infractions you're going to, you know, if you see them, how you're going to call it. Are you going to give some signals, some verbal? You're going to shout it out? You're going to have your hand raised? What are you going to do to show um, the judges how you're making those calls? You convey those expectations right at the beginning to everyone in the group and your pre-meet activities so they have an understanding. That way your expectations are met and the meet goes on nice and smoothly. Okay? 
The other thing that's, that is good to know is that you ought to know and determine who are the competing divers versus the exhibition divers. You know, you, you really want to try to make sure that they put those exhibition divers, um, put them in the lineup first. And, you know, if they're allowed, you might have big teams and so forth. They may not have enough time for exhibition dives. But hopefully everybody who shows up gets a chance to dive. Hopefully that happens. Um, but again, you want to try to have the exhibition divers listed first and going off the board. You want to make sure the announcer does not announce them as exhibition divers because, you know, we find that that kind of belittles them a little bit. We don't want them getting singled out or anything like that. We want them all to feel they're on equal footing no matter what their skill level is, okay? You as a referee, this is different than high school. High school is required to have them look over the dive sheets and so forth to make sure that they're right and to get certifications and all that. You as a courtesy can look through that. I as a referee like to go skimming through those, especially when we start getting to the older divers. Is every meet you're going to have a break and hopefully the break is right after the 11 and 12 year old uh, events and you have a chance to go look at those dive sheets so you get an idea if there's going to be any of these dives with twisters and things like that or you know 105s or things like that how many of those dives are in there so you know what to anticipate and maybe something to convey to the judging panel get them prepared okay during the meet you need to park yourself as close to the table as you can and you are working with that meet secretary throughout you got to have that that working relationship because if something goes goes haywire during the meet, you know, that's going to be your go-to person there. That you can go ahead and get any of their issues resolved if there's something wrong with a dive or something like that. But also the person you're going to be working with after the meet to make sure all the computation is done right. Okay, so you as the referee will always support the judges. The judges' scores are that they are supported no matter what, even if in your mind you think a judge is out of their mind and they've done the wrong score or whatever, that means nothing. You put all that aside. You just make sure that the judge's scores are recorded and that the table sees it and you're going to support those judges no matter what. You've got to have their back as they will have your back. That's a must. Okay. You've got to be able to recognize all those technical violations of, uh, you know, the infractions. You know, if, again, judges are going to call that dive as they see it, but if you see something different, you see something that's done wrong, hands in the wrong place, or violation of the tuck rule, no matter what it is, you've got to make sure you make those calls, make those appropriate calls. Just don't throw them out there because you think they did it. you got to be sure that the diver has done the infractions to make sure that you're you're making the right calls okay review those and, and make sure you understand when to look for those okay you got to make sure that you let the judges know what those scoring limits are going to be um, you don't have to give them a reason why every time you just tell them hey hands above the head four point max four and a half point max okay um, diver didn't come out of the tuck you don't only have to say sincere sincerely coming out of the tuck to say unsatisfactory dive two point max okay diver balked you know we'll instruct the uh, the announcer to deduct two points off of every score that's read you instruct the judges to go ahead and score it like they see it and then the table the announcer will take care of deducting points okay your correction of errors on the dive sheets you know when they can be corrected that's a big thing there okay because again you're not responsible for going through and checking all the dive sheets somebody hopefully did and before the coach and the diver and sometimes even a parent ends up signing that sheet but during dual meets it's just going to be uh, the diver and the coach certifying that those dives are listed correctly okay um, if it turns out with the required dives and they then they go up there and you get something announced and the diver did not go off the board did not perform the dive and the referee catches it you as a referee can fix that sheet make sure that those things are listed correctly but you could run into a problem there where a diver goes up there and you know you're in the second round and for some reason they decided that you know they're in the 13 uh, 
they're in the we're in the 15 and 18 and you've got the 15 18 boy goes up there well the the first dive is supposed to be a front dive the next one's supposed to be a back dive well the third one's supposed to be an inward and then they go and do a uh, one of their you know their their uh, optional dives and they do that as a third dive and they go off the board and they screw up and they don't do that required dive well they got a problem because they were supposed to perform that inward dive well that inward dive is now a failed dive and they can fix the sheet and put that optional dive back where it belongs and that may be the dive that they end up going up there and doing again that they can score for points but it's it is a difference there on those sheets you want to try to catch those things before they get off the board and really use the referee the only way you're going to catch that the only thing in your mind is you're going to know what the required dives are for that particular age group whether it's front dive back dive inward or the other one's just front dive back dive or line up or whatever it may be after that how they have it listed in terms of optional dives it really doesn't make any difference if they listed it wrong that's not a problem they just simply were doing that dive whatever it was although there are supposed to do the dives in the order listed now if somebody's at the table and they fix that and if they make a big hoo-ha about it you know the other coach can have that complaint and rightfully you can ding the diver for doing the wrong dive but typically you take the high road on that and just allow them to fix the sheet that but you can't fix it when it comes to the required dives they have to do required dives and the order listed okay some referee calls versus your judges calls you look on the rules uh, rule book pages 21 and 22 okay you all know about what the, the failed dives are you know assistance uh, the wrong dive refusing to do a dive um, over under twist and so forth again all these wonderful things are listed there you need to know when to make those calls uh, again twisting off the board is a no-no that's automatically a failed dive doing two box is a problem attempting to do a dive not listed we have our table as i mentioned we've got we've got the table here and if you're part of the the, the judging group i'm happy to go ahead and share that but that's a handy sheet but they go and try to do a dive it's not listed they can't do that they try to perform it it's failed but if they have it listed and the sheet signed that's a failed dive you just cross it right off they take a zero on that that's just the way it is okay two point deduction calls are the box that we've talked about the takeoff from the hurdle from both feet that's a no-no it's supposed to be one foot the verbal intervention before beginning the approach um, that's different than an intervention uh, while the dive is is going on if they go to set and they're in the wrong place or whatever and they are talked to to correct it that technically is a balk you need to make that call any questions folks are we good I don't mind if everybody's microphones on just go ahead and shout it out on the referee side here I'd like to rather rather hear from you you got questions go ahead and throw them out so moving on here again rules competition here the page is 21 22 here that's where you look for that stuff your four and a half point max calls illegal use of the tuck as we talked about in twisting dives and then the arms in the wrong position you know on the feet first entry and the arms are up you guys need to call that okay <laughs> everybody clear on that Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. I did have a question, Steve. Yes. With the, if you find a problem on the dive sheets, say you do review the dive sheets before the meet starts, uh -huh. and you say it's the wrong order, or they're doing a dive that's not in the in the book, can they correct it so long as the meet hasn't started? Or and if it's if they're in the second half, can they correct it so long as the second half hasn't started? Well, you've got discretion. Yeah. If it's one of these sheets, first of all, if you see it and it's before the competition started keep in mind when we say we want the dive sheets in that doesn't mean they can't make the changes before their event starts okay if you find a problem with a sheet go find the coach and say coach you got a problem with the sheet fix it don't worry about trying to find the diver the diver could be anywhere in the, on the premises or whatever but find the coach 
you can have the announcer uh, make the announcement, get the, the coach up there and say, look, we have a problem here. You need to fix this. Yeah. But yeah, anytime. Yeah. Again, I, there, you as a referee will have some discretion there. So if you're seeing some of that, especially if it's before the break, because that's actually the dive sheets are expected to be put in before the break is over. If that's how we have it still listed in our rule book because you need to have enough time for the table people to review the sheets to make sure they're right. Okay? Um, but certainly, rule of thumb is I've always allowed it if something needs to get fixed before the event starts, go ahead and have it fixed. There's nothing wrong with that. But once that event starts, that's it. Okay? We good with that? Good. Good. Excellent. Okay. Um, again, you know, these calls here, the two-point max call, wrong position, that's going to be pretty obvious for you. Um, again, <laughs> say sincere effort coming out of a tuck. You know, you as a referee, you're going to see that. It's very simple. If they're that close to the water and they haven't made the attempt to come out, then, they're, then they've just done an unsatisfactory dive. But then again, you can also look to see if they didn't scrape their hands for feet first, entry first, things like that. You can make that call when they're that low and they haven't gotten the knife, enough height. They're getting themselves in trouble. That and you can't feel bad if you got to make that call. Okay. So calling the box here, the first balk is a two-point deduction, as you all know. Second balk has failed. Um, just know when to call that. Your job is to not call it immediately when you see it. You if they do a false start, the diver can go reset. Perform the dive. When the dive's completed, you can you know, raise your hand however way you want to indicate. Say, I'm declaring a balk. Judges, please score the dive as you see it. Announcer, please deduct two points off of each score. If somebody throws up a one and a half, that's going to be a zero. There are no negative scores here at all. So whatever it is, that's what it is. It's a two-point deduction from that. But it can't go below a zero score. That doesn't happen here. Okay. Again, the fall starts here. Set, start, stop, reset, start. What we just talked about. The assistance we've touched on. Hopefully you all understand that. Yes? There's a difference between giving assistance during a dive. There's a difference there uh, of giving... The difference between giving assistance during a dive as opposed to giving assistance when they get to a set position and then they have to correct their set position. There's also the difference between giving assistance before they even set. There's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> Talk up a storm, whatever they want to do. Um, you just have to know when to call the box and when to call these, uh, you know, you really just calling these box here. And again, having something less than one step, <coughs> if they do a bunny hop to a hurdle, that's a problem. They can't do that. Um, hey Steve, yes. What if uh, what if um, one of their teammates calls out something during the dive? Because you mentioned before about a coach calling out was is a balk. What if a teammate calls out something for them? Is that considered well, a balk too? Ask yourself that question. Would there be any difference? Are they are they giving assistance? Yeah. There you go. Okay. You just answer your own question there. It, I, I I I default to coach. But it isn't always going to be the coach. It could be a parent. It could be anybody. But if it clearly gives an assistance that you feel as a referee has influenced the outcome of that dive, you got to make that call. Okay? You're talking about like mid mid dive or before or what? Anytime. Once they have started their approach, whether they're doing a running start or if they're in a standing position, they've clearly set. And they start oscillating or so forth. They've started that dive. Once that dive has started, that's where the no-no of giving assistance happens. You can't do that. Once they go in the water, they're underwater, scream your head off. Whatever, it doesn't make any difference. Okay? But the key there, the factor is, has that dive started? Keeping that in mind. Okay? So we're clear on that? We're good? Okay. We're good. Okay, lineups. Yes. Here's the thing with lineups I want to emphasize to the referees here. Don't get yourself too hung up on 
this whole thing with the lineups. But also keep in mind, you do have a responsibility that when you see this, you got to call it. Um, there's not a whole lot of clarity in our handbook in terms of how to deal with it. But again, lineups are just that. In some leagues, they call it fall-ins. Um, I don't know. Some other leagues call it different things. But it simply defines that lineup is that did the diver do any kind of push off the board? They're going to be doing it by standing on the end of the board. There's not going to be any running approaches. These are standing dives, standing standing start dives. They're either going to be facing out the water or they're going to be facing back towards the stand. And they're simply going to fall in. The hands can be way up in the air or wherever it may be. They might even have their hands down, but still, when they're going into the water, their hands need to be up. So chances are what they're being taught is to make sure their hands are up, to make sure they're up above their head. Because that's part of the skill that they're trying to learn. They're trying to learn form. They're trying to learn control. But the key is that, and again, when I talked about this with the judges, it was one of these things where we saw a lot of kids that were simply falling in. They had either minimal or no push at all. The rule of thumb here is if you don't see any push, they've done a lineup. If, if the coaches are listing this as a front dive or back dive and they end up doing a lineup, that's where you come in because the scoring ends up being something different. Okay? It's a difference between whether they're going to get a 1.3 on a forward or a 1.6 on a back dive. All the lineups are going to be a 1.0. It changes the DD of that dive. So if it happens, they list a dive and they do a lineup, you will, you will simply instruct the judges, the diver performed a lineup, okay, you can instruct them to score it as a lineup in that technique, and then you'll tell the table to correct the sheet. That's the only time you can have an allowed change of a dive on the dive sheet, not a position, but the dive itself. So use a referee will indicate you need to change that to a lineup. And on the other side of that, if the diver is supposed to do a lineup and they somehow do some kind of a push, there is going to be a lot of deficiency in that because they're not implementing the skill correctly. The skill is to do a proper fall in. And if they end up doing something that more resembles doing a dive, then they're not doing the skill correctly. So the judges should be dinging that down. That's going to be the judges. It's going to be up to them to make sure that they call that, but you don't have to do anything different with that, okay? And we go from there. Everybody clear on that? I don't want you to spend too much time dwelling on it because the lineups are going to happen, but the one thing you don't want to do is sit there and dwell on it too much. It's just a simple fact that you, the, your action really is going to be is if they list doing a dive and they do a lineup, you make that call, you make the correction, and then move on, okay? Um, the point here is that performing a lineup instead of a dive is not a failed dive, again, where you can change that sheet, and that's fine. Again, the referee is going to declare a lineup, was performed, instruct the judges to score accordingly, instruct the meet secretary to adjust the DD for the dive. Okay? Um, again, some of these, what you have here, you're twisting dives over and under, what you got to look for, just make sure you're seeing those your criteria for the calls. When you're looking to see if a diver has over or under twisted, and the judges could be looking for this too, it's whenever you have first contact with the water. There are some leagues that actually insist that it's not just contact with the water, it's where is the shoulder position all the way through the dive, all the way to them going below the surface. In this league here, it's first contact. It makes your life a lot easier. Where are the shoulders with respect to what position they're supposed to be in when they first contact the water? Does everybody understand that? So if you've got, you got a 5111, which is anything with a half twist, okay, you got a half twist dive, they go up and they turn and they're just turning, they're not quite turning that 90 degrees and they first contact the water. Well, that's not a 5111. They're still doing a front dive and a rather bad one at that. But the point here is that they've done the wrong dive. So that's a failed dive. 
and they may be borderline they may be hitting that thing at 90.0001 degrees if it's that close you don't say anything okay you only call the infractions if in your mind they've met the criteria even though that is barely making it you leave it up to the judges to make that call hopefully the judges will will score that quite deficient because that rotation wasn't quite turning you know the, the half twist as it's supposed to be so again you as a referee you're only looking for those infractions to make those calls and beyond that you don't have to say anything but you do need to look for it okay you don't advise them to say hey you know that was really close you're not doing any of that you just call it when you see it if they if they made the infraction that's when you act okay the illegal use of the tuck this is pretty universal on many leagues okay um, only allowed in certain dives we do list them here as I mentioned in the earlier session there there's a couple more maybe three other ones that we have listed in the book saying that it's allowed well it is allowed because there's only you can only either do a, a tuck or a pike in those it's not even free position dives on some of these but these happen to be the free position dives that do allow use that allow you to implement a tuck position if you think about what these things are and what they look like and when they can allow those you get a little bit of a better understanding but again these are things don't dwell on these but if these dives come up you'll know it's okay but generally speaking all the other dives that involve uh, the twist uh, they're, they're basically going to be doing pikes or have parts of it being straight and so forth so the tuck doesn't even come into the equation but again don't don't get too hung up on that okay after the meet is over you want to go ahead and make sure you get with the um, with the meet secretary make sure all the tabulations are correct and so forth if we're still doing those dual meet result sheets the paper copy there's going to be triplicate there's going to be a white copy a yellow copy and a pink copy you make sure all the, the numbers are right. You make sure that, that everybody signs. You as a referee need to sign that, that document as well. That means you've certified that that score is correct and that's gonna be the official record. And then the meet secretary can go ahead and distribute from there, okay? Uh, visiting team gets pink copy, home team gets the, uh, the yellow copy, and the, the white copy generally goes whoever's keeping records for the league. Um, and you go from there okay um, the other thing to keep in mind you as a referee you when you get there even if it's your pool find out who the pool manager is now you're I'm not suggesting that you know you're gonna run into trouble during the day or something like that but you you want to be prepared you want to know who is the pool manager on duty it's not the pool manager whoever the big dog is you need to know who is a pool manager in charge for the meet in case something happens if you have any issues with you know having to remove somebody or something like and all the years I've been here I've yet to have to remove anybody from a meet and I don't intend to have that happen I hope you all never have to do that but you never know but the main thing you want to have is to know who the pool manager is if you have problems with the weather and things like that keep in mind when it comes to weather related things and going on you as a referee do not make the call on weather that is the pool manager they are responsible for everybody that's at that pool you have to keep that in mind if they say stop the meat get out of the water you do what they're told okay you're in charge of the meat but that's it the dive meat itself but the pool manager is always going to be the one who supersedes that know who the person is and work with them and go from there okay so that's basically the tools you've got so we're going to run through this this uh, real neat little quiz I realize it's after nine but we're going to make it real quick this is essentially the same test I've given to a lot of you folks over the years and I've only tweaked it a little bit so see how you do so hopefully everybody's got their microphone on and you can just shout it out okay you all ready yes okay here we go okay number one the diver who becomes 15 on or after june 2nd shall compete in which age group 13 14. 13 14. 13 14 it is there you go excellent the dive executed which does not appear on the dive sheet is what 
Yeah. Failed dive. Failed. Yeah, that's failed. You bet. Okay, a dive. If a dive has been performed clearly in a position other than announced, is determined by who? Referee. Uh, Announcer. That, that would be you all. The dive will be declared out of position with a maximum of what? Two. Two points. Two points. Excellent. Good job. Okay. If one or both arms are above the shoulders on a dive with a feet first entry, jumps excluded, the referee shall declare what? Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half, four and a half. Point, four and a half point max. Excellent. Good. Referee declares what when a diver makes an obvious attempt to start a dive and then stops? Balk. It's a balk. That infamous balk that I keep talking about. Okay. A dive sheet that has been a that has been signed by the diver, the referee. Oh, I'm sorry. A dive sheet that has not been signed by the diver. What must the referee do? If that diver hasn't signed and certified that. If sheet, this is before the meet, you get him to sign it. If well, you're going over the dive sheets before, you should notice if he was missing a signature. I, I understand that. And then you should ask them to go sign it or ask their coach you're to get it done. Absolutely right. Them. But the question is, what do you do if they never sign the sheet? Get them to sign it. What's that? Get them to sign get it. Get them to sign it. If you've already started the event and it's not signed. And you were a bad ref because you should have caught that. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> From the standpoint of the referee, what's your choice? I fire myself and quit hey, my job. Well, you have to disqualify. You hope to God you never run into that. Because as you said, Loretta, <laughs> it should never happen. That can never happen. You want to make sure that. But see, again, that's where it's out of your hands as a referee because somebody else is supposed to be checking those seat, sheets and they should be doing it. Anyways, moving on. A dive sheet that has correct dive numbers but no description, the referee must what? Announce the description. Well, you go by the dive numbers regardless of right. if there's a description or not. So whether it has it exactly, yep. okay? Allow the diver to compete. You could have grandma's best apple pie recipe written on that line, and it wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> As long as you've got the correct dive number, that's when you as a referee will go in and get it fixed and make sure you've got that. Okay? Let me ask you another thing. What do you do if you, and I didn't put this in here, what do you do if you get a dive sheet that doesn't have the positions? Does it have the number? It's got the number. Then you use the number. Well, got the number but you also need the position you don't need a description so what do you do <clears throat> the lowest well, you to... here here's what i would tell you to do use proper discretion here and just say look there is no clear rule as to what you're supposed to do as a referee but technically speaking if you want to be i hate to say this anal about it it's it's in it's not a complete dive sheet if you don't have the complete dive number with the letter in position. But our rules don't quite say that. So use common sense and just make sure you get a position written on there and move on. Because you know you don't have to worry about a description, but don't get too hung up on it. Okay? Again, just common sense. Just err on the side of the diver a, a, as much as you can. But when you can't not a whole lot you can do okay um moving on excessive rocking or a crow hop on the diving board shall result in who deducting what points that's going to be judges. judges one to two one to three yeah a half point to two somewhere in that area that's something that they should know to do okay which age group of divers may use the 200 back jump as an optional dive which age groups are allowed to do that up through 12. How many agree with that? I thought all of them. Any age group. Absolutely. Yes, any age group can use those. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's an option. 
you know, the 200 back jump is actually one the eight and unders can use as the second dive. It's worked in there. They can either do a back dive or a back jump. Okay. Now, uh, moving on, 10, a required dive listed out of order can be corrected by who? Meet secretary under the instruction of who? Guess who? Referee. That's, that's where you come in, okay? So the meet secretary isn't going to quite just go ahead and do it, but the referee is supposed to step in and make sure that stuff gets fixed, okay? Um, okay, number 11, of the who must ask who to determine if a dive may be repeated at no fault of the diver. So we need to repeat a dive. Who, who has to ask what? The diver has to ask the referee. The diver's got to ask that referee, exactly. Okay. So a, next one, a diver appears to hit the board during the flight through the air. Point deductions are determined by who? Judges. Judges. Yeah. They got to use their discretion there as to how they want to handle that, but that's purely a judge's call. Okay, if a diver fails to perform the dive announced, what happens the here? The referee, yeah, the referee the shall fail that dive. Okay, it's very simple. Number 14, the who and the what shall review all scores tabulations. That should be the who and who. who does referee all and meet secretary. Referee and meet secretary. Again, we touched on that. That's part of your job that you're going to be doing after the meet. Okay, um, if a diver in the opinion of who does not make the sincere attempt, there's that word sincere again, who we talk about, the referee, does not make that sincere attempt to come out of a pike or a tuck before the beginning of the entry of the dive, the who? <coughs> referee. The referee is going to declare that dive what? Unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory and, to, and instruct all the judges to score a maximum of two, right? So the point of that is just making sure you understand. That's really on you you see it you call it hopefully you call it every time okay but that whole thing getting hung up about sincere attempt just keep it to the to the fact that if they've hit the water and you don't see any anything that resembles them coming out we have a problem okay some quick true and false questions here for a diver 12 years and under a very good dive should receive a maximum of a score of five and a half false false god i hope that's false <laughs> Okay, uh, meet canceled during the 13-14 event for reasons for the weather and other other related things shall completely start over from the eight and under event which it is scheduled. False. 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 Right. Where do you where do you pick up? Where are you left off? The second half. So you're in the you're you you're in the 13-14 event and you just completed round two, and you just had the first diver go off the board for round three. And the skies opened up. Where do you go back and restart? You restart from 13 and up. We don't 13, 14 event. You are at the 13 and up, but where do you start? You restart from that second half of the event. You've already completed round one and round two of that event. Where do you start? Round three. You start, restart. Round three. You start where that incomplete round was. So if all the divers didn't go off around of three, you restart there in round three. You do not restart the entire event. Okay? That means you've already got the dives in. They've already got the scores in. Now they're going to the next round. Okay? You just, that's where you pick it up. Okay? You start, wait, sorry. Um, if you're oh. in the middle of round three, and don't get through round three, you start back at the beginning of round three? Yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you, do. you do not start back at the beginning of the event. You start at the beginning of whatever round you had to start. Uh, uh, you got stopped in. Okay? You have to have complete rounds. You don't have to have complete events. That's a difference. Okay? Everybody clear on that? Okay. Are the uh, participants for the 15 and 18 <laughs> event frozen based on what happened on the day who was uh, registered on the day of the original event well here's the other interesting thing you can always add divers to the next event if they weren't available so long as their event hasn't started so in other words if you're in the 13 14 say you're in the 13 14 girls you're in event seven if eight nine ten haven't started they can add divers to that they qualify. You can add them in. There is nothing wrong with that. They can be added on. 
And if you got halfway through round one, what ha- you'd reset to the beginning of round one, but that event has started, so you could add it to matter. That's what you call it. That's essentially what's happened. You're going back and you are starting the event over, but that's only because you didn't get through round one. By default, it's the beginning of, of the event, but technically you're, you're restarting round one. The event, I guess, has started. You can say that, but you have to redo the dives because the event started, okay? That's the other key, and that's a good point, Bruce, because that event did start. So in that case, you can't add divers because that event already started. Even though you have to restart back at the beginning of that of that round, <laughs> that event has already started. So that's something else. That's another caveat to keep in mind. Everybody good with that? Okay. Okay, makes sense? Good. Okay. Uh, the announcer shall read the judges' scores in the same chair order throughout every event. Yes, absolutely. Okay. The referee will discuss and review MCDL rules with all judges immediately before each meet. Got to do it. That's part of the duties. You got to make sure you go over all that stuff if you need to. Okay. You know, discuss the obvious. If you're already into the season, you already passed the first meet. You don't have to give them the long-winded stuff, kind of like what I'm doing to you all right now. Anyways, um, next one. All divers must perform their required dives in the same order. True. Um, true. Very true. They all have to do the, the you got to do the required dives in the, in the correct order. They can do their optional dives in whatever order they have, but it's they got to do it in the order they have it listed on the sheet. Okay? Now, twisting dives. A diver is allowed to begin the twist motion before the feet leave the board. I think we've already hit on this. Absolutely not. You got they got to be off the board when they they start doing that. If it manifestly starts on the board, they're in trouble. Okay. Now, any 13 and up diver may not perform dive 100 or 200 in any championship meet. False. 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 You know why it's false? Because the DD takes care of it. No. It's the optional dives. They can do it as the optional. No. What it is, 100 and 200 can be done at any time during dual meets. You can do it any time during a divisional meet. But the 13 and ups are not allowed to do jumps at all stars. Mm. That's the difference. It's in the rules. They cannot, they have to, if they qualify for all stars and they use the jump to get there, they got to come up with another dive. It's in the rules. We hmm. changed that a few years ago, and that's why I put that question in there. It's just something, that, again, stuff to read that's up. That's true. So, can we go back, Steve? That's true. Yeah. The way you've worded that, you it says they may perform it because the statement's false. They might not have been true. No. Any 13 and up diver may not perform dive 100 or 200 in any championship meet. Any championship meet. Oh, so they can do it in divisionals, but they can't they do, can it do it in all stars. Meet. They can't do it in all stars. That's that's the point. <laughs> okay. It's a championship meet, but it's divisional meet. They're allowed to use it. They can use it to get themselves qualified for all stars. But when they get to all stars, can't use it. That's why that question is worded like that. So you have an understanding of the distinction. I'm trying to say with this question, you can't use it in any championship meet, which is not true. Well, I would suggest, Steve, that when you, if you could update the slides and actually put the explanation underneath the false here, so that well, is people come back I'm, and look at this. This is why I'm putting the question to you. I'm trying to make you all read the book and understand that. Right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the point? <laughs> well, I want the book, but you're making me print it out myself. The book? Don't you have a book from 2019? I'll have to go find one, Steve. I think I should. Right. Hey, electronic copies of the 2019 book can, can go on your iPhone, can go on your Android, can go on your computer, and you can have it with you at all times. I like to have it on my phone with me, so I don't have to worry about carrying a paper copy anywhere. 
This is one of those gotcha questions like they uh, think. No, I'm I'm not doing it to be seen. I'm simply putting it there to make it. There was a clear distinction that people were having a fit about seeing jumps being performed at all stars. So they pushed the changes rule, and then we put it in. I personally didn't give a hoot, and I was running the all star meeting. But I'm just saying that's what we had to deal with. So I have to put that point there and make that distinction. But yeah, guys. I hate to say it, but you got some homework you got to do here. That's why I said you got to know what's going on. Okay? Referee may immediately remove. This is another one. A referee may immediately remove any official coach or diver from the meet. What do you think? Somebody gets ornery, gets stupid, and, and all That's that stuff. True. So, what's, so can a referee just go ahead and remove anybody, any coach or diver at any time? <laughs> An obvious and really serious infraction. I can make a recommendation to the full manager. True. Look, the, the, the answer here is false, okay? The point being here is that, yeah, there's another one that throws you for that one. The key here is that you got to give the person a fair warning. I will also tell you, I have never thrown anybody out of a meet. And I have no intention of throwing anybody out of me. I've had parents get mad at me. I've had coaches get mad at me. I've had all that. And you just have to learn to take the high road and smile and take it. But the problem here you have is that if you get a parent that starts dropping the F-bomb or this or that or getting way out of control around kids, that's where I draw the line. And I very quietly and very patiently will give them a fair warning. But if their next sentence has the same thing, this is going back to the same thing. You need to know who the pool management is because you need to go to them and say, this person needs to go. It's not your job to physically have them escorted to the gate or whatever. You need to make sure that you have somebody to go to that takes care of that. Again, hope you all never run into that. I don't even, I can only recall hearing about it in the league maybe once, maybe twice, but I'm having vague recollections of it and I'd like to keep it that way. Okay, moving on. A diver who has failed two dives may still be eligible for team points. True or false? They failed two dives. I think false. False. It is false. Once you fail two dives, you can't compete for points. You're done. You're done competing for points. Okay. A protest can be made against the marks awarded by the judges. False. Absolutely false. false. You have the backs of those judges. You make sure that you let them know you've got their back. Even if you think their call is ridiculous, you keep it to yourself. You have their back at all times, okay? There will be no protest. You must support the judges at all times, no matter what the score is. Okay? A referee may pause the meet and consult the rule book before making any ruling decisions. True. True. Absolutely. I hope you all know there's nothing to be ashamed of there because even I have well, I will do that. I don't that's why I keep it with me. It up and goes awry, you know. The next one, a half twist a dive with a half twist. A dive of less than ninety degrees or more than two seventy is a failed dive. True. 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 I know that. Okay. Divers can perform two optional dives from the same dive group. False. Absolutely false. They, they can't do two optionals out of that same group. They got to go with one of the other ones. Absolutely. And changing posi position does not count. Okay. The meet referee is not required to sign the official sheet results sheet. False. 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 Yeah. You false. Got to make sure you're making the official record. You make sure you sign that. A hurdle is required for every forward dive with or without an approach. False. Absolutely false. You know why? Line up. You don't need a hurdle if you're doing a standing dive, right? Doing takeoff, and you're fine. Okay. A diver may eliminate an optional dive, fail another dive, optional or required, and remain in competition for team points. False. False. Okay. It's false because false. you get this idea in their heads that, well, I didn't fail the dive. I just opted not to do it. Well, you opt not to do it. You failed it. That's how it goes down the paper. So you failed two dives, and that's what it means. 
The competing diver who fails to dive can not perform. Can you make promise? His or her dives. Everybody get that? True. Hey. False. 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 What, what's that racket? <laughs> so yeah, it's false. It's really going to be up to the teams there, you know, because what you're doing is they can just be put into exhibition. If they still got dives, you go ahead and get them done. You know, again, this is developmental league, and you you want to have them dive as much as they can. Okay, any diver that is diving up may eliminate, opt out of an optional dive, and remain in the contest competing for points. This is important. False. False. It is false. Because when you get divers moving up, they're opting to take on perhaps another dive. Now, that may not be true with an 8 and up going up to 9, 10, but still, you want to make sure they understand you don't get to opt out of anything. You have to do the dives that are listed if you dive up. Okay? So that is false. Okay? It's possible for a division. Now, I love this, I love this one. Some more math for you. It's possible for a division, based on our current rules, for a division with six teams, and I think that's all we can have now is we only have six team divisions, right? Um, the one with six teams, you can send up to 12 wild cards from event number eight. Based How on the referee question, Steve. Well, I think it's a referee question because you may run into it. Because if you're the referee and you got an overload event, you want to know why. But this, what's the question? What is it, true or false? Absolutely can happen. That's just a fun question. Anyways, um, there's the other thing here, and this may have more to do with coaching, and this is just for fun. It's the last one here, folks. Um, this has to do with a diver and a 15, 18-year-old uh, boy is able to do all of his required dives, front dive, back dive, and all that. He's able to do all of his required dives but he only has two optional dives listed. So therefore, he only has five dives when he's supposed to have six. Okay? So that makes him exhibition status. And therefore, he could not be competing for team points. So but, well, hold on a second. So the coach wants a diver to compete for points because they, they might need it to win the thing. So he makes, makes the diver list a six dive, which he knows he has no intention of doing. Okay? Coach tells the diver privately when it comes up to do perform the dive, declare to the referee that he will be opting out of eliminating this dive, this optional dive. So simply three questions for you here. So is it legal to do this? No. Well, actually it is. It they is. can do it. Yes, no, no. Well, is it a good coaching strategy? Perhaps, yeah. Okay, is it ethical? Well, that's where you can decide that for yourself. I'd say probably not. Anyways, um, these, these sheets here, some useful things here. I'm going to have them go ahead and post this. Hopefully you all can use these. Again, these are just the back-to-back the -back sheets you all can print off. It's got every dive we have listed and the correct numbers are on there as opposed to what we have in our current handbook. So I'll make sure I get that out and you all can download that off the website. Okay, other help sheets, these are on the, uh, the website as well. Um, if they're not, I'll make sure that they're there. Those are helpful guides you can use when you're doing your pre-meet duties and so forth just to make sure you've got everything covered. Okay? You'll, you'll be sending these out to the people you sent yeah. this Zoom out to? Yep. You want to make sure that the, uh, the, the board has those and you all can have access to them. Okay, folks, that's it. I'm sorry it took a little bit more time there. Um, but that's basically it. You all did pretty well. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Can't they get a gold star, Steve? Steve? I know you don't like me asking those not so exactly technical referee questions, but oh well. <laughs> what can I tell you? Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a little bit of fun with that, so you're all good with it. Y'all have a good evening. Thanks, so Steve. Thanks, Steve. Be safe. Steve, thank you so Hi. much. You got it. Good night, everybody.